Guys, in this video, we want to look at this non-healing, that sounds scary, non-healing midline granuloma. So, we are looking at what? ENT. In ENT, we are looking at nose, isn't it? So, basically, look at this here, midline granuloma, non-healing. Okay, so it is granulomatous disease of the nose, isn't it? So, let us look at the classification given by the textbook. Granulomatous disease of the nose, granulomatous disease of the nose, unspecified cause. Under unspecified causes, the cause uh, they are telling it could be vaginous granulomatosis, non-healing midline granuloma. This is what we are looking at now, non-healing midline granuloma, sarcoidosis. Okay. So, uh, basically, what are we looking at today? So, we are looking at non-healing midline granuloma right granuloma okay so um, another photo here after some days after three months of initial presentation this is how it has become okay so <clears throat> it is uh, a nasal manifestation of systemic disease so what is this actually it is a nasal manifestation of systemic disease what are we looking at non-healing midline granuloma it is a nasal manifestation of a systemic disease so let us look at that so systemic diseases involving nose the disease is non-healing midline granuloma it's a systemic disease okay so they are also calling it as peripheral t-cell neoplasm interesting okay now suddenly we are entering the territory of neoplasm so, for the same thing, they are saying peripheral T-cell neoplasm, non-healing midline granuloma or polymorphic reticulosis. So, many types of names they have given here. Right? So, under the heading peripheral T-neoplasm, let us see what they are saying. It is a slow destructive disease of the nose and mid-facial region. It is differentiated from vaginous granulomatosis by the absence of pulmonary and renal involvement. So, basically, uh, one differential diagnosis will be vaginous granulomatosis. So, however, um, in vaginous granulomatosis, uh, there will be involvement of everything else, like pulmonary and renal. In this one, there is only mid-facial region destruction, isn't it? The disease is, ma the disease is a malignant lymphoma or its variant. The rate of destructive process depends on the patient's immunological response. Okay. So, malignant lymphoma or its variant mid-phase region, what is happening? Destruction, slow destruction of the disease. How slow, how fast, it depends on the patient. Okay. Clinical features of what? Of this midline granuloma, non-healing midline granuloma of nose, non-healing Midline granuloma, clinical features, unilateral lesions in nose, okay, in the nose one side lesions are there extending to soft tissue of nose, it is up, it will extend to upper lip, oral cavity, maxillary sinus and orbit, kind of what we are seeing here, isn't it? Yes, lesions are explosive and rapidly progressive, what is this? Just now they said it is slowly progressive here, slowly destructive. And here they are saying it is rapidly progressive. Okay. Secondary infection of lesions by negative and in or anaerobic organisms. Anaerobic means they will not take oxygen. So these uh, the bacteria obviously or any or, uh, organisms will lead to secondary infection. Okay. As usual any secondary infection can happen to these lesions because of other organisms. Okay. So now let us look at this. They are trying to compare Wegener's granulomatosis vaginous granuloma with the disease we are looking at now peripheral t neoplasm yes what are we comparing against what vaginous granuloma granuloma with our peripheral t cell neoplasm or the midline non healing granuloma okay the midline destructive lesion may cause total septal destruction in vaginous granuloma there can be total septal destruction pulmonary and renal involvement etc anyways we will look at this table here this is what we want to look at in vaginous granulomatosis they seem to be very uh, nice nice 
and onset is gradual progress is gradual okay then your renal involvement is there yes this is a bad thing isn't it there is renal involvement ear involvement tracheal involvement in vaginal granulomatosis but in uh, this uh, peripheral deep cell neoplasm it's explosive it's rapid and it's diffuse everywhere but other things it is not involving like renal ear tracheal that they have not mentioned here so each thing has good and bad just remember wegener's renal everywhere peripheral t neoplasm t cell neoplasm the other involvement is uncommon okay guys so let us uh, continue with what what are we discussing wegener's granuloma uh, against this peripheral t cell neoplasm what did we look at in the differences so far wegener's uh, granuloma everywhere it will involve even other things like uh, renal and uh, ear everything it will involve this is our ear so looks like kidney now right our ear lobe yeah now it looks like ear so ear trachea kidney everything will be involved in what wegener's granulomatosis okay now let's continue so histology they're talking about histology let us see histology vasculitis will be there here polymorphic lymphoid infiltrate lymphoid means we'll always put um, purple lymphoid infiltrate polymorphic lymphoid infiltrate okay let's just look at this a little more okay <clears throat> see here that uh, wegener's granulomatosis some c and k diagnostic this is a c and k antibodies isn't it then uh, ebv rna that is epstein barr viruses rna will be there in o it will be there in this the virus will be there detected interesting so here they are blaming it on virus in this uh, peripheral t cell neoplasm they are blaming it on uh, epstein barr virus rna and in wegener's they seem to be talking more about uh, immune right some uh, antibodies so how will you treat immune suppression right so that was interesting right so they are saying ebv rna is detected in the peripheral t cell neoplasm in the peripheral t cell neoplasm ebv rna is detected shall we continue so what are we looking at non healing midline granuloma also they are calling it as peripheral t cell neoplasm okay what is the what are they blaming it on they seem they initially said um, what did they initially said in this they initially said it is unspecified cause now they are blaming it on virus okay let's move on so here they are saying it is slowly destructive but here they are saying that it is explosive rapidly progressive and even the table seems to say that it is explosive and rapidly progressive so yes so we'll go with this explosive one only then diagnosis what do you want to diagnose right midline granuloma diagnosis non healing midline granuloma like let's look at the diagnosis biopsy it will show mixed population of cells okay first thing they will do let us just highlight it biopsy then immunohistochemical studies they want to do immunohistochemical studies okay then the third one they want to detect the rna of this virus epstein barr virus okay Okay so what are the three main headings they have mentioned for diagnosis biopsy immunochemistry and detect the viral rna immunohistochemical studies what are you trying to do antibodies to leukocyte common antigen some a uh, lot of things they have mentioned here cd20 t lineage marker cd3 cd43 cd45 ro natural killer marker cd57 etc biopsy what will you do you will take the tissue isn't it and then you will check the mixed population of size cells you will see mature lymphocytes probably that's why they are saying it is a t cell neoplasm isn't it what are they calling it as peripheral t cell neoplasm t cell is what lymphocyte right so they are trying to detect all those things natural killer cells etc so where and all you can mention lymphocytes you can mention here 
lymphocytes then t cell lineage markers then epstein bar virus okay so what else now diagnosis of over, uh, over diagnosis you will you will take the tissue you will find out all the immuno histochemistry and you will check the virus everything you will check the tissue how it is uh, you will see mixed population of cells mature lymphocytes plasma cells large lymphoreticular cells okay so which resembles a lymphoma so that is what you will see now let's move on how will you treat this basically radiotherapy this already you have seen in the table isn't it it is a curative radiotherapy follow, followed by surgical debridement and nasal prosthesis so they have to give some solution to that person nasal prosthesis if it is a multi organ disease standard leukemia protocol but they said it does it's uncommon to see it in renal etc but anyways they have mentioned this here actually this table what we saw kind of summarizes everything that we have seen see what they said if you just scroll down here you can see see here immunohistochemical study diagnostic in this um, midline non healing non healing midline granuloma treatment radiotherapy already they have mentioned everything in this table this table almost has everything so just take a recap with this table itself okay so basically peripheral t cell neoplasm uh, midline non healing uh, non healing midline granuloma or what was the other name they gave it they gave it yet another name right polymorphic reticulosis did you understand this polymorphic this word has come again somewhere in the diagnosis i think polymorphic mixed population yeah but okay it hasn't come again fine guys uh, let's go back to the table and uh, revise so guys we have reached revision stage look at this peripheral t cell neoplasm diffuse uh explosive onset rapid progress but it doesn't involve renal etc it doesn't involve ear or trachea and what will be the yeah here polymorphic lymphoid infiltrate then uh, you will detect epstein bar virus rna and you can do immunohistochemical study for all the t cell markers and then uh, uh, what's the treatment radiotherapy okay so let's take a recap from the beginning non healing midline granuloma it is a granulomatous disease of nose of unspecified cause but then they have mentioned epstein bar virus even wegener's granulomatosis is same thing granulomatous disease of nose unspecified cause but wegener's granulomatosis they are blaming the immune and in mid non healing midline granuloma finally they are blaming the virus other thing in this this group is sarcoidosis so it is a nasal manifestation of systemic disease interesting that's what they are saying but then uh, what they are they saying we'll remove the slowly destructive because it's not correct right it is um, an onset is rapid okay mid facial region malignant lymphoma it's a variant of malignant lymphoma uh unilateral lesions in the nose extending to the soft tissue of nose upper lip you can see here upper lip overall cavity everything is uh, involved here so all these clinical features can you understand let us see here <coughs> unilateral lesions of nose extending to soft tissue of nose upper lip oral cavity maxillary sinus and orbit yeah this kind of a scary photo then um, secondary infection of all this can happen lesions are progressive and rapid uh, lesions are explosive and rapidly progressive we saw how to differentiate it from wegener's granulomatosis wegener's granulomatosis basically is slow 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 but it involves renal etc and it will cause total septal uh, destruction wegener's granulomatosis you will see c anca um, antibodies etc and you will not find any virus in wegener's granulomatosis and basically in immune suppression will help in wegener's granulomatosis but this one uh, uh, mid non healing midline granuloma will need radiotherapy and all that okay then Uh, how will you diagnose you take a biopsy and then you try to detect the uh, virus and also you do immunohistochemical studies uh, you will detect uh, t cell lineage markers and uh, some um, antibodies to the antigen okay you will detect some antibodies to the leukocyte common antigen then you will say b cell b cell markers also b cell markers also you will see t cell markers also you will see 
Epstein Barr virus you can detect. Lastly, treatment we saw radiotherapy. Remember, you have to mention this word radiotherapy. Then surgical debridement and nasal prosthesis if required. Then it is a multi-organ. If it's multi-organ, you will get the standard leukemia protocol. Okay. Now let's just look at one website which is giving all the information about this uh, disease. So you can go through this. This is where the information comes from. They are showing you the histology also. NK cells. Didn't they say natural killer cells will be there? Yes. Okay then. After debridement, they are showing how it looks. Then they are showing the hematoxylin and eosin stain slide. What will you see here? Suggestive of lymphoma. That's all. Please look at this if you want more information. That's all for now, guys. See you. Bye-bye.